the public is confused. Uh, back in January, I was working with uh, a colleague from the Frankfurt Zoological Society who directs their Africa program, and he showed me the cover of, uh, of Time magazine from November of 2009, had a picture of tuna and uh, bleeding tuna, and he said, well, tell me, should I stop eating fish? I really love sushi. Should I stop eating fish? So I said, well, what's the alternative? And he said, well, chicken, pork, beef, you know, he says, there's no way I'm becoming a vegetarian. You know, my, he said, he said, my ancestors, uh, we were only about 20 miles from Olduvai Gorge. I uh, said, my ancestors came out of the trees and worked their way through Africa and up the food chain over the last three million years. I wouldn't want to dishonor them by becoming a vegetarian. This question, should I eat fish, prompted me to think about some things I had seen recently. Um, one was I was at a meeting of the Convention on Biodiversity and the FAO on the impacts of fishing, and some people presented a, or showed me a paper, it had been published quite a while, on the energy efficiency of different methods of producing food. And I'll admit I was surprised that fishing on average was more energy efficient than any form of producing meat. More, more efficient than chicken, more efficient than pork, and more efficient than beef, much more efficient than beef, a, a little bit more efficient than chicken. Um, and then I'd come across another paper on carbon footprints. Uh, and, and again, fishing had a lower carbon footprint than any other form of producing uh, meat, which I have to admit uh, surprised me. So if you really think about it uh, and just start comparing the impacts of fishing on the environment with the impacts of other forms of meat, because if someone isn't going to eat fish, they're going to eat meat. That's, that's just the facts of life. And the demand for both is growing quite rapidly around the world. Uh, and so if, if, you know, if, if Greenpeace doesn't want people to eat hokey, that means more meat's going to be eaten. Uh, that's just as clear as can be. Um, so if you think about other comparative impacts, uh, um, fishing is amazing in that it requires no water, uses no pesticides, uses no fertilizer, uses no antibiotics, and, and uh, doesn't cause any soil erosion. So on, on those measures of environmental impact, fishing just has any form of agriculture beat by a mile. The big criticism of fishing has been impacts on biodiversity. And if you, uh, if you look at the literature on the impacts of fishing, and there's quite an extensive literature, and for instance, people compare the abundance of fish inside marine protected areas to outside. And what you find is, not too surprisingly, there's more fish inside marine protected areas, that, that abundance outside is usually 50 to 70 percent lower. And the diversity, that is the number of species in fished areas, is about 30 percent lower than in unfished areas. And these are the kinds of biodiversity impacts that, uh, that the environmental groups worry about. Um, similarly, if you compare trawled to untrawled places, you see roughly similar uh, kinds of differences that on average the abundance is 50 to 70 percent less and the species diversity is about 30 percent less. Uh, but with trawling, it's quite variable. On, on soft sediments, mud and sand, there's almost no impact of trawling. On hard bottoms with a lot of uh, epibenthic uh, flora and fauna, the impacts can be 80, 90 percent or, or even more. If you think about the standards we have in fisheries, and, and the best international standard, the most common, is the Marine Stewardship Council. And I remember the first time I encountered the Marine Stewardship Council's criteria, I was reviewing the West Australia Rock Lobster um, certification, which I think was the first certification that was done, and I came across principle two of the Marine Stewardship Council. And it says, fishing operations should allow for the maintenance of the structure, productivity, function, and diversity of the ecosystem, including habitat and associated dependent and ecologically related species on which the fishery depends. Now that is a pretty high standard. And I remember at the time thinking, wow, gee, um, farming would never stand up to that. And, and, and it's very clear that no form of agriculture could possibly claim to maintain the structure and the function of the ecosystem. Green groups are, in, are criticizing farming as well, and I, I understand that they've been particularly aggressive on the New Zealand dairy industry, which has been expanding a lot. But I don't see them saying you shouldn't drink milk or you shouldn't eat meat. Okay, they will criticize the groups, but somehow they're saying you shouldn't eat hokey or you shouldn't eat all sorts of a range of species. I think probably only about 3% of New, New Zealand's fish production would qualify as something you should eat by the forest and birds or, uh, list. Um, so the question is, why are fisheries being held to a totally different standard? And 
One simple number is that if you wanted to replace the world's fish catch with animal protein produced by grazing, which is essentially where much of the expansion of meat production is coming from, you would need to cut down the entire rainforest of the world 22 times over. That's the biodiversity cost of getting rid of fishing. And if you were to just say, let's ban trawling, that's the bad boy. Well, about, about a quarter of the world's fish production is produced by trawling. So you would need five times the world's rainforest to produce the fish equivalent caught by trawling. Um, so the, the point here is that uh, if, we, if we consider the impacts of not eating fish on biodiversity, they are actually quite a bit higher than those of eating fish. One way to reduce impact is to not eat meat because meat is, it takes a lot of land and uh, causes a lot of problems. But uh, if you compare fish to just farming, let me tell you, my, my wife used to be an organic vegetable farmer. Okay, she had five acres of vegetables. She had a hundred subscription customers. She sold at farmers markets. She sold to restaurants. You know, this is, you know, in some sense, the greenest form of food production. But those five acres had been rainforest in the northwest of the U.S. And uh, I'll guarantee you there was no remaining biodiversity. It was completely transformed to something else. So it's, I think a good case can be made that, that fishing has less environmental impact than organic vegetable farming. Um, now, the amount of land we're talking about is, is, not, is not the same, but the fact is that fishing is one of the few forms of producing protein or food that largely leaves ecosystems intact. In summary, this isn't to say that fishing is fine, there's no problem. Uh, we need to in minimize the environmental impacts of fishing, and this will involve reducing exploitation rates to level probably below this, which will produce MSY, but probably at levels that produce maximum economic yield. It has less environmental impact. Fewer species will be depleted. There will be less fishing effort out there. Less fuel will be used. We need to eliminate bycatch of sensitive and charismatic species by technological means, by uh, whatever it takes to, to, to solve that problem. And we need to close sensitive habitats to destructive fishing methods. But fishing is always going to impact the environment. And we simply have, as a society, to accept it that it, we can't take food from the ocean uh, without reducing uh, biodiversity, but on average fishing is probably the best way to produce food, not the worst. Um, and NGOs need to figure out how to be reasonable in setting the same standard for different forms of food production. So thank you very much.